is the life of field. Um, there are essentially five key elements here, and they follow in a serial fashion. You start off with exploration, where you're seeking and searching for oil and, uh, and gas. Well, because we're talking about hydrocarbons, these are oil and gas. And once you find something, then you go and have to delineate and determine the size of the prize. How big is it? And that's called the appraisal. So you look at the aerial and the vertical extent and how big, big it is. <clears throat> once you have appraised your discovery, then you go into um, lots of studies and you um, basically uh, develop what's called a field development plan <coughs> and that's a kind of a recipe how you're going to develop your uh, discovery uh, and that has lots and lots of ele elements in it. It's a recipe and once that's approved by all the key, uh, 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 <coughs> sorry, key uh, uh, players, uh, st uh, stakeholders essentially, then you go in into development mode and once the development uh, is completed then obviously you're going to produce the oil and gas. Um, and the final um, stage of the life of field is the abandonment, which is sometimes called cessation of production. So that's where you leave your um, area where you uh, produce the oil and gas from in a greenfield fashion. Uh, in terms of technology impact, um, obviously there's a lot of probability um, research goes on and a lot of complex algorithms and Bayesian theories and stochastic programming and things like that. What impact has the rise of supercomputers had and the ability to process a lot of data? What impact has that had on the, on the industry and in particular the ability to, to find oil? Oh, that, that's a fantastic question. I think uh, um, it's uh, been absolutely phenomenal. Um, the technology advancements uh, not just uh, hardware, but also software algorithms, which uh, have been developed in the last 20 years, especially in geoscience, um, they've had huge impact. Uh, in um, you know, um, uh, looking at the architecture of the subsurface, looking at uh, you know what is down there on the ground, and you can uh, image these things and actually see all the faults and um, the the actual uh, uh, different layers, uh, and uh, you can look at the hydrocarbon saturations that's the, the uh, which is contained within these sand grains, and it's just uh, absolutely phenomenal in terms of uh, uh, some. Uh, well, uh, let's go to the 80s, for example. Uh, in the 80s, um, uh, 1980s in the North Sea um, and uh, elsewhere in the world, you can easily say the same thing. Um, uh, the, we had uh, early stages of three-dimensional seismic, and um, now we've got what's called 4D. Um, this is a fourth uh, level of uh, seismic. Uh, uh, it, it's just absolutely phenomenal. You can actually see the uh, oil water contact, which is the water underlies the oil because it's heavier than the oil. And then uh, as you extract the oil, the oil water contact actually physically moves. And you can uh, image that using 4D seismic. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, some of the fields would not have been uh, developed because um, the technology that we use today. Um, and uh, another relevant point to add to this fund is uh, if you go to this, back to the 70s um, and then moving to the 80s and 90s and now, um, the recovery factors, that's the uh, percentage of oil that you recover of the stock tank oil initially in place, we discussed earlier, um, the recovery factors have been increasing. And that's partly as a result of uh, the technology uh, evolution. 